second lecture of our example number one, which is the design of n type of latex gutter. Okay, so students, you all know that in the last lecture we will discuss about our step number one, which is the geometry of latex gutter. So, in geometry of latex gutter, we will discuss about what is the height of truss, length of panel, and after calculating the height of truss so you can see that this is your height of truss this is your panel length so after calculating all these both the values we will discuss about this diagonal length okay so these three values will be discussed in our step number one after that we will discuss about the design of cross beam okay now what is cross beam so you all know that the cross beam is supported on the flooring system okay so this cross beam is supported okay so this cross beam is supporting our floor system so whenever you can see your elevation view your figure and your foot over bridge will be like this and if we are seeing your foot over bridge or foot over bridge from top point of view our foot over bridge will be so like this okay and it is already discussed that this is our cross beam and the section of cross beam may be channel section or a I section okay so now in the last lecture whenever you have to design any component first of all you have to find out load acting on the cross beam okay so generally three types of load which acting on cross beam so first one is self weight of slab second one is floor finish and last one is live load okay so after calculating these three loads and you all know that this is your end cross beam this is your intermediate cross beam okay now from this floor system from this panel half of the load is transferred to this cross beam and half of the load is transferred to this cross beam similar way whenever we have to design for this panel our half of the load is transferred to this cross beam and half of the load is transferred to this cross beam it means you can see that your end cross beam takes half load while your intermediate cross beam takes a full load because half of the load coming from left side and half of the load coming from right side okay now your intermediate cross beam takes a full load it means the design of intermediate cross beam is heavy as compared to your end cross beam okay so if we are designing for heavy load then it is compulsory to pass for light load okay so in the last lecture we will discuss about moment capacity and after that the maximum shear force so both the values is coming as 78 kilonewton into meter and this is 78 kilonewton okay now first of all we have to find out plastic section modulus okay so it is denoted by zp now this equation is coming generally basically from page number 53 okay so you all the students are moved to page number 53 in which you can see that your close number 8.2.1.2 your equation of md md means design moment is equal to beta b zp fy divided by gamma m0 now you all know that and it is already discussed in your ehd subject that your steel component having four properties first one is plastic compact semi-compact and slender and whenever you have to design any component then you have to make sure that you have to design any component with respect to two parameters first one is your building is safe and second one is your building is economical 
okay that's why first of all whenever you have to design you have to take lower section and if your lower section is failed then you have to design for medium section if your medium section is failed then you have to design for higher section okay so that's why it is assume that in this example we have to assume that our section is higher section okay there is no lower no middle is assumption over here for a gto point of view okay so your maximum higher section having the property of plastic property and this plastic property is given on page number 18 okay so you can see that the value of beta b is equal to 1 for plastic and compact section okay now if we are putting this beta b is equal to 1 in this equation then the equation of md is zp f5 by gamma m0 okay now we have to find out the value of zp so now zp is your subject then the equation is md into gamma m0 divided by f1 okay so this calculation is done in the last lecture now we have to design some component okay and we have to choose our component in such a way that our value of zp must be greater than 343.20 cm cube and you all know that and our it is already discussed in our introductory section of this chapter that whenever you have to find out the value of zp then this value of zp is not given in steel table okay this value of zp is given on page number 138 and 139 on is 800 2007 okay so we have to design our component in such a way that our value of zp must be greater than 343.20 cm cube okay so you all the students are moved to page number 139 so this is the figure of and this is the figure of page number 139 of is 800 2007 in which you can see that your second last column having the value of plastic modulus you can see that this is zp and the unit of zp is cm cube so this is the reason why we are converting our mm cube to cm cube okay now you have to design your component in such a way that your value of zp must be greater than 343.20 cm cube okay now there are number of values you can see that this is ih ishb indian standard high beam indian standard medium beam indian standard low beam or large beam okay so you can see that your value of this column must be greater than 343.20 so that's why we have to choose our value 443.09 okay so 443.09 is greater than 343.20 you can choose any component having the value of zp greater than 343.20 you can also choose your component 343.27 you can also choose your component 356.72 okay but in this example with reference to adult percussion book we will choose our section of 443.09 so you can see that your 443.09 cm cube value is for islb 275 okay now we have to write down all the properties of islb 275 like this okay so this is your trial and error method okay so you can see that we have to first of all try islb 275 at 330 newton per meter now what is 330 newton per meter meaning it means 
your sulfate of IgSLB275 is 330 Newton per meter. It means whenever we have to convert your Newton to kilonewton, it is 0.33 kilonewton per meter. Okay. So, this is the sulfate of your component. Okay. Now, the properties of this IS section is capital D. Capital D means total depth of section is equal to 275 mm. ZP is equal to 443.09 cm cube. BF is equal to 140 mm. TF is equal to 8.8 .8 mm. TW is equal to 6.4 mm. IZZ. IZZ means moment of inertia in Z axis which is equal to 5375 into 10 raised to 4 mm raised to 4. R. Your capital R is root radius. Okay. You can see that this is one curve over here. So this curve value is considered as your capital R and this value is 14 mm and now at last it is your ZP. So what is the value of ZP? It is 443.09 cm cube and this 443.09 cm cube is greater than our required value of ZP. Okay. So after all these values we have to try and we will now discuss about what is the section classification. It means our this selected section is in which state, whether it is plastic, compact, semi-compact or slender. Okay. So you all the students are moved to page number 18 in which you can see that your I section having two components. First one is flange and second one is wave. So for flange, you have to see that your first value outstanding element of compression flange in which your first value is B upon TF. Now what is D? So you can see that this is your BF not B. So you can see that on page number 19 in which there is first figure in which it is clearly mentioned that for rolled section rolled means bolted section your value of B is BF by 2. Okay. So it is 70 divided by 8.8. .8, so it is 7.95 epsilon. Okay. And this 70 7.95 epsilon is less than 9.4 epsilon. It means your flange is in plastic moment or in plastic state. Now we are moving further for the wave component and for your wave the equation is small d minus sorry small d divided by tw now what is small d small d means effective depth so or it is also called as small d is depth or height of wave okay so the equation of small d is capital d minus 2 tf because we have to deduct both the thickness of flange from upper side and from bottom side. Minus 2R, it means your I section having radius of I, R. Okay, it is called as radius of root. So, one radius of root is minus from upper side and another radius of root is deducted from bottom side. Divided by TW and after putting all these values, we will get our answer. 35.84 epsilon and this 35.84 epsilon is less than 84 epsilon. It means your wave is also in plastic state. It means your flange and wave both are in plastic state. Okay. So now this is our section selection. Now we have to check that our selected section is capable to take maximum moment and maximum reaction okay so this is your step number three and step number four so now you can see that your step number three is check for moment capacity and what is the equation of moment capacity 
So it is already discussed in our last two last slide that this equation is given on page number 53. So the equation is mb is equal to beta b z p f phi by gamma m0. Now you can see that your selected section is in plastic state. It means your value of beta b is 1. Now this zp is your zp provided because we have to check that our selected section is pass or fail. Okay, that's why this zp is your provided zp. So it is 443.09 into 10 raised to 3. Now we have to convert your cm cube to mm cube because the unit of fy is in newton per mm square. Now the value of fy is 250 and the value of gamma m0 is 1.1. So after putting all this value, we will get our answer 100.70 into 10 raised to 6 Newton into mm. Now we have to convert Newton into mm to new kilonewton into meter because in the second step, you can see that our maximum moment is 78 kilonewton into meter. So whenever you have to equalize both the values, your unit is same. So you can see that your selected section takes 100.70 kilonewton into meter moment, which is greater than the required moment. So your section is passed for moment capacity. Now, similar calculation for shear capacity. So the equation of shear capacity is VD is equal to AVFYW divided by gamma M0. This equation is given on page number 59 and on page number 59, the equation is given as VD is equal to VN upon gamma M0. Now you can see that what is Vn? So it is clearly mentioned that your Vn is equal to Vp and your equation of Vp is AVFYW by root 3. So if we are putting your equation of Vp in this equation, then your equation will be like this. Okay. Now Fyw is equal to 250. Gamma M0 which is equal to 1.10. Now what is AV? AV means shear area. So for shear area, you can see that over here, it is clearly mentioned that for hot rolled section, your value of AV is equal to H into TW. Okay. So if we are putting this value into this equation, we will get our answer 230.940 Newton. Now, your maximum shear force is in the unit of kilonewton. So that's why we have to convert your newton to kilonewton by dividing it with 1000. Okay, it means your maximum shear capacity of your selected section is 230.94 kilonewton. But as per IS codal provision, it is clearly mentioned that your VD must be 0.6 VD, not exceed your maximum shear force is 0.6 VD. So if we are multiplying this value with 0.6, then we will get our answer 138 point something. So your 138 point something is also greater than 78 kilonewton. So it means your selected section of cross beam is safe in moment capacity and shear capacity. Okay. So students, this is the end of your today's session and this is the end of your design of cross beam section. In the next lecture, we will discuss about the design of our main components. Okay, so this is the end of today's session. Thank you.